French hitching or French whipping. Okay, this is gonna be a really short um, video today um, because it's so simple to do this one, but it's a fantastic knot for covering um, a piece of pipe, for example. I've got a piece of pipe here um, and I'm going to cover it with um, French hitching or French whipping, as they call it. Um, so you could use it for the handle of, say, a walking stick that you're making. Um, it's just basically a covering knot. I have also seen it used as, uh, for strengthening. Um, in fact, in the past, I've had a split piece of wood. Um, and in order to strengthen it, what I've done is I have covered it in French hitching as such. And that's given the, the, my piece of wood a bit more stability to allow it to last a little bit longer. And protect it from um, splitting anymore. Um, so what I've got here is I've got just a little piece of plastic pipe to demonstrate on and as you can see here I've got a constrictor knot at this point here which is holding in place a piece of black red or red black camo um, paracord. So it's black red paracord camo in a sense, so camouflaged as such. I'm not sure that red and black is a camouflage colour, unless of course I'm drafted to the red planet, then I might need to use it. Um, but maybe somebody out there who's watching this can tell me, yes, you need red black camo or black red camo for such and such an environment. Um, I can understand why we have desert camo or normal camo, urban camo, but black red, I'm not sure about. Anyway, that's enough of my um, going on about that. So basically, I've got my length of cord here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how to tie French hitching. And it's very simple. So I'll get the, get the cordage out of the way. So I end up with a long strip like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this lead round the back like so. And then take the working end underneath and just pull in all the excess. So keep pulling like so, and as you can see, it's all coming through, and eventually, there's my working end has come through like so. And I'm just gonna neaten it up, pull it up tight, nice and tight, as tight as you can to start with. As you go on, you'll be able to pull it tighter um, along the length of it. And then we do exactly the same again. So I go round the back, Oh, sorry, I've gone the wrong way. Oh, when you're concentrating on video rather than tying a knot. So always go in the same direction. So round the back, take all your cordage through. So we've gone round the back, back through there. So we've just got a hitch, a basic hitch as such, and then pull it through and bring it up next to the first one, like so. And then once again, we go round the back, through there like so, bring it through, pull all your cordage through, and we've now done our third pass as such. And you can see here, knots are starting to form in a nice spiral pattern around our bar. And I'll just show you one more time, then what I'll do is I'll cut the video and then come back to it. Oh, well, that was a good bit of constrictor knot. However, it's done its job. So if it falls off, it falls off. So once again, we take the lead round the back, pass it through itself like so, pull in all the excess. There we go. And basically, there's our loop there. So we've gone round the back, through itself, and then we bring it up tight there and that's all we do so what I'll do is I'll use up the most of this rope and then I'll bring the video back and just show you how far I've got with this and it is just a nice covering knot makes a good handle um, you could use it on your knife for example but if it's don't just make sure it's not too thick because otherwise your knife handle could become uncomfortable on a walking stick Yep, it should be fine depending on how thick your stick is, 
but I feel as though that would feel quite nice on a walking stick. So I'll stop this video and then I'll come back again in a second. Okay, so here I am back again. And as you can see now, I've done a couple of inches on my pipe there. And as I've gone round, creating this knot, as you can see, there's a nice, let's see, get my chubby fingers out of the way. There's a nice spiral bead forming its way around the actual pole itself that I've got here. And so therefore, it makes a nice grip on a walking stick or something like that. You won't slip off it and it really is a wonderful covering knot as such. And once again, all I'm doing is I'm going round the back, through there, and then pull it up tight. Like so, pull it up nice and tight. And then once again, round the back, through the gap, pull it up nice and tight. Once again, whoop, wrong way, round the back, through there, through the loop there, and pull it up nice and tight. And don't forget, as you're going along, just push it up like so, so that you cover all the gaps in the actual cordage itself. And as you can see, it's come out, it's, I think it's come out quite nice. I'll have a look at the video later on. But you can see it's come out quite nicely here. And if I had enough cordage, I could cover the whole length of this. Um, and then the next thing I would do to finish it off is I'd probably tie a Turk's head just here. And then when you get to the end, tie another Turk's head around that there just to cover those two loose ends. You can tuck those ends in if you want to, but I quite like a Turk's head on each end. It just finishes off nicely. And if you use a different color, it makes it look um, quite splendid as well. So that's French hitching. Um, very, very simple and easy to do. Uh, the other thing I'd recommend as well is if you're planning to go a long way on something, it's always a good idea to do a short distance first with some cord and you, then when you've done a short distance, unravel it and measure how much cord you've used to cover that distance. And then that will give you a rough idea of once you multiply it over the overall length, how much cord you're going to need for the overall length. And I would also recommend that when you do this, you calculate the length and then add 10%, say. Only for the fact is there is nothing worse than running out of cordage um, before you get to the end of something. Um, or you could do, if you want to, do a short length to about halfway, put a Turk's head around it, and then another length down there, Turk's head at that end, so you're mixing it as you go along through there. So that is the French hitching or whipping. And what I've done here is I've got one here that I did actually many years ago on this piece of, um, well, it's a, it's a shoe horn as such. And as you can see here, in fact, it was done so long ago, this red was really, really dark, bright red. And as you can see, it's really faded as the sun's gone on. The shaft itself, I actually found this in a skip. And the shaft itself was very rusty. You can see actually some of the rust possibly, you can see that coming through here. But I've done this French hitching along here. And as you can see, this lovely bead of cord has spiraled its way up the length of the shaft here. And then it's terminated at this end as well. I've done a green um, Turk's head knot um, to finish that end off. And so I think to be honest, for something that was rusty, old and horrible, um, this has now produced something rather lovely. And if this, say, for example, was a walking stick, when you get hold of that, there's no way your hand is going to slip because that spiral down there is just giving you more grip than you would if you just had a bare piece of pipe like so. So there we have it. That is um, French hitching. Um, and that's it. It is so easy to do, but it, it just gives a lovely finish. So French hitching.